In this section, we're going to talk about using recursion to develop a fast sorting algorithm. So if you'll recall the selection sort method we used, um, it takes time proportional to n squared, where we're using the number of comparisons of elements that an algorithm does as a proxy for the time it takes, and it's proportional to the time. So um, n squared grows quickly, if you'll remember the graph we looked at, and that means it's too slow, really, for sorting large data sets. So we need to develop something more clever. So the first thing is, why is selection sort slow? Well, basically, um, it's doing something similar to comparing every element to every other element. That's why n squared, n times n. Uh, we're being a little more clever than that with selection sort because um, after we find the smallest one, we set it aside, and then we only compare the rest of the elements to the second one, third one, to find the second smallest, to find the third smallest, we again leave one out. So instead of an actual n squared, we have the sum of n plus n minus 1, n minus 2, and so on, which adds up to n times n minus 1 over 2. And um, that's less than half as big, but it's still roughly proportional to n squared, and that's what counts. Even half as big is too big very, very quickly. So the fundamental idea for using recursion is to divide the problem in half some way, do the half separately, and then put the answer back together. If this is done cleverly, it can give us a time proportional to n log n instead of n squared. So um, to see how this works, let's look at a particular example, which is by merging sorted lists. So I'm going to start by explaining merging. And here we have two lists, A and B. Um, each one is sorted in itself, and then we want to make a combined list that's sorted. So what we're going to do is look at the first element of each list, um, put that one, whichever one's smaller, in the answer, and then effectively take it out and keep going till we've got everything done. So let's see here how it works. Here's our starting point, um, list A and list B, and the answer is empty. And if we compare, one is smaller than two, so we put the one in the answer, uh, leaving the remainder of list A to be looked at. List B remains the same. Okay, the second time, we'll pick the 2 out of list B because it's smaller than 5 and put it in the answer. Okay, now we have two 5s. We just arbitrarily pick one, so we'll pick the one from list A. Here's what we're left with. Okay, now 5 is smaller than 8, so the second 5 goes into the answer. Next, the 7 is the smaller one, so that goes in the answer, leaving this. Now the 8 is smaller, that goes into the answer, leaving this. Okay, now um, 15 is smaller than 20, so we put 15 in the answer. 19 is smaller than 20, so we put 19 in the answer. And now list A is empty, so we know we can just put the remainder of list B into the end of the answer, and that's our final step. Now, how many comparisons does it take to do merging? Well, to get an element into the answer, we need to do one comparison. Um, until we get to the end, but ignoring that, that's fairly minor. So that means that in general, um, we're going to build an answer that has an element, so it's going to take time in, in terms of comparisons to do that. Okay, how do we do merge sort? Well, what we're going to do is divide our list in half conceptually, sort each half, and then merge the two sorted lists. Which, okay, that works if you can sort the two halves, and how do we do that? Um, using merge sort. But wait, isn't that kind of a circular definition? Well, not really. Um, we can start at the bottom, and let me explain what I mean by that. Uh, suppose we have a totally unsorted list, which I'm showing you here, and the numbers at the top here are the data elements, and down below I have indexes, uh, just so I can refer to them easily. So basically, what I'm going to do is think of each of these individual elements as a tiny list with one element um, that's sorted. It only has one element, so it's sorted. And then what I'm going to do is take pairs of those. So I'll take the first two elements and merge them into a sorted list with two elements. 
same thing for the next two elements, same thing for the next two, same thing for the final two. So you can see that when I finish doing this, I have sorted out sorted pairs, sorted lists of length two, and my next step is going to be to take those lists of length two and merge them into lists of length four. So we'll do that here. I'm taking these two lists and these two lists, and I've merged them into this. And then I took these two and these two and merged them into this. And now we're ready for the final step, which is to merge the two lists that each have four elements into a totally merged list. And we do that here, and the final list is sorted. Okay, so we're doubling um, the size of the pairs each time, the size of the pairs of lists each time we do a merge. And so the number of times we can double um, for, starting from one till we reach size n, that is the log base two of n. And if you think about it, each um, stage where we do, first where we do lists of length one, then when we do lists of length two, each stage um, takes small lists and merges them, but the overall time to get something into the answer for that stage um, is one comparison, so that the overall time is uh, n for one stage. So the overall time for the whole algorithm with log n stages, time n for each stage, is n log n, which is much, much better than n squared. Now there are lots more approaches to sorting. Uh, one would be quick sort. In quick sort, you do something completely different than merge sort. Uh, you pick out an element of the list, and you put all the ones that are smaller than it in the front, all the ones that are bigger than it in the back, stick it in the middle, it's done, and then um, recursively do the two pieces. So, okay, to just compare every element to this key element and move it to the front or the back, that's time n, because we're comparing every element in the list to this one element. And then um, the number of stages you do, well, if you're able to divide roughly in half each time, you'll again get log n stages, um, and so the overall time will be n log n. Um, okay, now I should say quicksort can run, actually run into trouble if you end up with say a list that's already sorted so you're not dividing roughly in half each time and there are clever versions of quick sort that try to get around that. Okay, selection sort and bubble sort are not recursive. Um, I didn't introduce bubble sort but you can find it in the sorting sampler and um, contrary to what it says on here, bubble sort can be faster than selection sort but they are both proportional to n squared. Merge sort and quick sort are both recursive in concept, although of course you can find ways to implement them with clever programming that don't explicitly use recursion. Um, merge sort is actually excellent for sorting data that's too big to fit into the computer's memory. Now with gigabytes of memory now, that's not an issue like it used to be, but still if you have gigantic data sets, it's good to know it doesn't all have to fit in the memory. You can use merge sort. Quick sort is one of the sorting the fastest sorting methods around and is actually probably the most used when we need uh, a fast way of sorting. Um, and I mentioned before that if you happen to have sorted data, it can actually take time n squared. So there are tricks to try to avoid that. Actually, the best time to sort just based on comparing data items is n squared. Uh, sorry, n log n. And, um, Quick sort and merge sort does both achieve that, at least in their average time, and, and merge sort in its worst case time. Um, you can do a little bit better sometimes if you know that your data that you're sorting are numbers. Then there are ideas you can apply that don't apply to just anything. But um, we might be sorting words or, or something like that, or dates or what have you. So in that case, uh, we just could rely on using comparisons and then quick sort or merge sort are going to be, at least in the category of the best uh, algorithms. Now I don't want to give you the wrong idea. If you have a really small amount of data, just um, use any simple algorithm or rely on a built-in one you may have available. If your program handles huge amounts of data, then you may want to co 
come up with a custom way of doing it. And the main purpose of talking about all this is to give you a feeling for the vast array of clever algorithms that are out there. Uh, sorting is a good example because it's such an important problem and there are so many sorting algorithms as a result. Now, um, I've given you a sorting sampler that lets you compare various algorithms. Uh, let's say I use 100 elements. Um, going to create the data. And here it is. And um, let's try sorting this with selection sort. This tells me how many comparisons it actually used. Now I'm going to reuse the data and sort the same data with bubble sort. Um, a few less. Okay, let's reuse the data again, but this time use merge sort. Wow, big difference, right? And um, finally, we'll reuse the data again and use quick sort. And on this particular data, quick sort's a little bit quicker. Okay, so um, I'll just briefly show you the code. And if you are curious about this, you can look through it. There's a um, piece of code for each type of algorithm. So here's selection sort. Uh, here's bubble sort. In each case, you push the button, and that triggers the actual sorting algorithm. So here you have bubble sort. Um, here you have merge sort, which... Um, you can see is recursive here, the recursive calls. And one thing we do in here is we switch over to a uh, selection sort if um, the sublist we're starting to work on is small enough. So we don't actually go down to size one. We go down to some size like eight, sort that using some simple sorting method, and then we start doing merging based on that. That's actually faster than doing um, merge sort all the way down and here's um, the merging algorithm and then here's the code for quick sort and again we do the same technique once the sublists get short enough then we switch over and use selection sort so it's fun to look at this code and um, you'll notice if you look at selection sort that it takes two parameters which are the index of the first element where you want to start the sorting and the index of the last element and um, that's to let it be used as a subroutine by quick sort and merge sort as well as a uh, standalone sort as a, on its own. So you can try this with different sizes of data and um, 100 is the most you can use but you could change this if you want to try larger ones and see even more dramatic differences and the amount of uh, comparisons and therefore the time. So I encourage you to read this code and play around with this so you get a good feeling for uh, the importance of the algorithm you use in the running time of your programs.